The best seat. When it comes to seats, they seem to come in, in many sizes and many styles. However, the thing that seems to make seats most significant is where they are placed and who it is that perhaps is sitting on those seats. As we think about preferences related to seating, uh, we have a, a local restaurant that uh, just about any seat has a good view of, of the water, but our preference is to have a seat right by the, the windows for that beautiful view of Port Townsend Bay. And then in one of our local theaters, we enjoy finding a seat that's not too far back, but, but not too uh, close to the screen either, and, and centered in such a way that we have a, a good perspective, a good view of the screen. At a concert or sporting event, uh, perhaps uh, we would rather not have the nosebleed seats, even though perhaps for many of us that might be only what we can uh, afford, but it, it's not unusual, and, and we understand the idea of preferences, that, that it's, it's not unusual for people to have a preference when it comes to seating. Someone has said, and you, I'm sure you've heard this before, that people are funny. They want the front of the bus, the middle of the road, and the back of the church, referring to seating in, in the church building. As we seek our, our place in, in life's arena, this is what we really need to give some consideration to. Uh, there is someone who has said progress is making bigger and better circles to run around in. Is, is that our perspective of our standing in this world? As we seek our place in, in life's arena, there, there are many who, who seek notoriety. You know, they want to be noticed. Uh, they, they want personal, uh, their personal significance to be spoken of. Uh, there are those who focus on high society. You're know, living uh, what they term the, the good life. Um, you're living very, uh, very comfortably, extremely comfortably. And then there are those who, <clears throat> who focus on high standing, you're elevated above others, you're uh, being prestigious and running around in prestigious circles. However, we also need to understand that the high standing of integrity and the high standing of godliness can characterize a life regardless of social standing. In fact, often it's exhibited more among the poor than among the wealthy. Even James in, in James uh, chapter 2 and verse 5 said, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? which he has promised to those who love him. James was addressing this because there were preferences that were being shown amongst those that he was, was writing to. People were being treated differently based on their social status. And James noted that that is not uh, to be so, that that's, that's dealing with others with evil intent. And, and so... He reminded them that uh, the poor who are rich in faith, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, it is what we all in Christ are sharers of. Yet there is this battle between self-exaltation and self-surrender. We want to, to be significant and seen as significant, and we all are as, as God's children, as, as a part of, of God's creation. And we need to recognize that in connection with, with God and not just with the world. But, but there is that, that battle that goes on between self-exaltation and, and self-surrender. And what is it that is, is winning in our life? And do we recognize where the true blessing is there? Remember our, our Lord's rebuke of some of that day. In Matthew chapter 23, that, that chapter of woes where Jesus is criticizing and drawing attention to the practices and, and the behavior of many of the leaders of that day. We read here in verses 1 through 3. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. 
So do not observe, so do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach, but do not practice. They were sitting in a significant place. It was a respected place to sit on Moses' seat, to be teachers of the law. Unfortunately, they were not sitting respectfully on that seat. They were not acknowledging Jesus as they needed to do. And, and here, even though they were teachers of the law, they were not even practicing themselves the things that they were placing upon the people, the things that they were teaching uh, the people. And yet they were fulfilling a role. They were fulfilling a role of, of drawing attention to the commands and to the law of God. And, and that needed to be listened to. That needed to be taken uh, to heart. But yet their practice was not in sync with what it was that they were teaching. The thing that they sought, we see as Jesus addressed it in verses 5 through 7, they do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. They loved the notoriety. They wanted to sit in the places of prominence. They wanted to see what their position was or what they thought their position was. They wanted to be noted for that amongst the people. And Jesus even observed that himself as they would go about the, the things that they were involved in. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 7, there we read, Now he told the parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, and Jesus went on there to tell a parable of a wedding feast. And addressing this, this idea of those who would come in and assume a, a prominent place and then have that uh, humiliation of being told by the host, by the one who had put together the event. You know, uh, you know, that was reserved for someone else. Here, you, you know, you're going to have to move someplace else. And then they, they find themselves in, in a lower place. Or, but better for them to, to come in and sit and have the, the host then seat them where the host wanted to seat them and have the prominence that way. And, and that's how we need to focus our relationship with God and where God places us, not where we just assumingly place ourselves. Jesus, in Matthew 23, of verses 11 through 12, went on to note, the greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will will be exalted. This is something that also James and also Peter encouragingly addressed. In James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. And then Peter, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Humbling ourselves, it is God who does the exalting and, and does it his way and in his time. We need to come to understand it is in humility and, and humbly surrendering ourselves, our life to God and, and to his will that we gain the best seat that we could possibly even desire. It is God who exalts us into a, a realm and into a kingdom that is eternal. And so let us be encouraged by our present reality in Christ. <clears throat> let us consider where Christ himself is seated. The writer of Hebrews, as he was introducing or, or drawing the attention to, to Christ here, as he would go on to, to point to all the better things that are in Christ rather than going back to the law and, and observing the things of, of the law, but the adequacy of Christ and, and his sacrifice. We read in verses one, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. 
He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. <clears throat> After having purifi uh, making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Jesus, after he offered his life for our sins, after providing the means of our redemption and being raised from the dead, he was then also raised back up to heaven. He returned to heaven in the sight of his apostles. And there he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Romans 8 and 34 and Ephesians 1.20 and Colossians 3.1 and, and 1 Peter 3.22 also note that where Jesus is seated. Jesus is seated on high as king over his eternal kingdom. But as Jesus is seated on high, what does that mean then for us to be in Christ? <clears throat> and Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 4 through 7, Paul encouraged those at Ephesus with these words. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Do you note know here three widths that he mentions? And he mentions that we were made alive with Christ. And he also notes that we were raised up with him. And then he says we, were, we are seated. He seated us. He seated us with him. And we don't want to be without him. This is the picture of our life presently with Jesus, being seated with him. Once we entered into Christ through baptism into new life, we were lifted above the life of this world. And we have been continued to be exalted in him no matter See, this is the place that God has loved and longed uh, to provide for us in Christ and has done so in Christ. And no matter how hard we might try to lay claim to honor and notoriety in this world, <clears throat> there is no higher exaltation than for us to be seated with Christ. As our Lord's everlasting kingdom encompasses both heaven and earth, we are presently dwelling in an exalted and eternal realm under his sovereign rule as we are part of, of that kingdom. And though we will face death and may face death in, in, in this life unless the Lord comes before we, we die, we, are, we will be translated and transferred into heaven, but we are already a part of his eternal kingdom. His kingdom encompasses both heaven and earth. And Jesus reigns over that kingdom from on high. And we are dwelling presently under his sovereign rule. Seated with him is, is a sign of uh, the Lord's desire uh, for us. In John 12 and verse 26, there Jesus said, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Jesus wants us to be where he is. But if he's in us, he's with us now. And we are with him now as we are united with him through the waters of the baptism to rise into that new life under his sovereign rule. We are presently in Christ. We are seated with Christ in this heavenly realm. We are alongside him. This is the encouragement of our, our relationship with him as we, we look forward to the fullness of that, of being with him eternally in heaven. Knowing then our place, 
this place that is ours by grace, Ephesians 2, 8. Let us continue to surrender and so be exalted by him to the place that our Lord desires to provide us and for us to share together in. Knowing our place, may we keep our focus there. In Colossians, Paul wrote there to the church at Colossae in Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, <clears throat> not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We have been raised with Christ, and because of that, we need to keep seeking the things above. Let us not be distracted by the things of this world. Let us not be drawn uh, affectionately toward those things. Yes, there is a role for us to play in, in this realm, but it is a heavenly role that we are to be playing. And so we need to keep our, our eyes on things above, to seek those things where Jesus is seated at the right hand of God and recognize how presently our life is hidden with Christ and, and God and, and what a glorious thing that is because the Father looks at us through Christ and we are redeemed, we are pure, we are holy because of Christ. Let us humbly surrender to Christ that he may exalt us as we are crucified with Christ, dying to self and, and dying to sin, and buried with Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised up into the new life in him. And presently, we are seated with Christ in his eternal kingdom that encompasses heaven and earth. That is the place Jesus came to provide us. That is the greatest place that we should ever seek to have. That it is a place that he makes possible for us. Seated with Christ. That's the seat that we need to, to stay in as Jesus remains the sovereign over our life.